Hello, Goranges are on view, this time for our sale on the 11th of July. What have we got for you this time? Well, let's have a rummage in the smalls room and then perhaps we'll pop over the warehouse and see what's going on there. So, where to put your money at the moment? How about in a money box? And there's a few nice lots of money boxes here from a house that I went to near Leatherhead. Um, this is lot 1435. What have we got in it? So, we've got a rather nice Mauklinware um, money box, hence the slot. Uh, printed with a view of the Grand Parade St. Leonard's, no less, in pretty good condition there. And then with it, a couple of sort of random house, you know, that looks like Delft to me. Um, that's the sort of Staffordshire type. It's not actually, it's porcelain, so it's probably continental bisque. And then these typical continental fairing type money boxes, all in, all in porcelain, probably German, late 19th century, and all pretty small you see so you yeah. know but then money was small then low value money but small little little silver coins and I things love their expressions yeah they're good fun aren't they're they look great. is that a dog with a moustache or a man with a the dog head i don't know um nice little lot that that's lot one four three five there are lots of money box collectors around it's a thing so um but they're probably worth you know one to two hundred pounds over the back here i don't know, rummage behind the back it's nice little lots tucked away here Still on money boxes, 1442. This is a lovely lot. These are sort of Sussex pottery in the main. So we've got this sort of stylized fish, I suppose, I guess. Um, and then something similar that is definitely a pig. That's so good. It's got a curly tail. Yeah. There's a cat. This sort of red terracotta-like pottery, typical of Sussex, of dicker ware and rye pottery and the like. You know, you put your money in that, it stays in there. You oh, either so got to shake it, it out or you've got to break it. It's oh. not going to, um, there's no access allowed. You've got a shoe, there's a barrel, there's a nice sort of marbled chest of drawers there. So a really nice lot that. One to 200 estimate, probably make more. Otherwise, what else do I see behind there? We go, but that little Chinese just, rank just bag. Looking at the fish. The fish, Italian. Oh, wow. Yeah, look at those. They're Goodness fun, me. aren't they? Now these are signed. I haven't looked up what these are. Um, Scagnetti. Scagnetti Aldo, it says, so I'm sure we've researched those because that's how we roll. Um, they look to be sort of 60s, 70s. They're great. And they're each individually on their own, so they've got some appeal. Yeah. Now, look at this strange discovery. Mocha, come here. Mocha. Look at this. It's Mocha's great ancestor. Can we spot the difference? Come around here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Look that way. She says, look, oh, look that way. Doing? Look. Oh, there we go. So funny. That is Mocha, oh, Mocha as, uh, in the Black Forest of <laughs> Bavaria. Her great great grandmother lived there and was modelled and carved as this wonderful inkwell. There we go. Look at that. It's great fun, isn't it? it great is. size. The hollow log as the pin tray. We like the lolling tongue. Quite possibly. No, not the original thing. It doesn't quite fit in, but no. it does the job. It looks the part. So there we go. That's got 1518, estimate two to 300. Great fun. Elsewhere. How about some silver cups? So in said house in Leatherhead, I looked at this and thought it was at Sheffield Plate because I couldn't find a mark, but Roger's given it a good clean up. Bang, 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 up popped the hallmarks on it. George III, 1795. Mm. Benjamin Hines, Jacobus Maxtell, Maxwell rather, 1795, ascribed upon it with a rather nice monogram, mm. monogram armorial on the back. I think Roger's estimated that eight to twelve hundred now. Next to it, lot one eight one one, something completely different. This is German, eight hundred standard, from nineteen o five. Very stylish, mm. sort of secessionist influence there. I drink my red wine out of that. Well, good luck with that. I'll drink mine out of that then. <laughs> um, that's lot one eight one one. Estimate two to three hundred pounds. Lurking down below, nice rummage lot here. Look at this, one four eight two. How about um, a moderate, modest arsenal of um, assorted percussion pistols, mostly box lock, but there's a nice beaten up old flintlock there. Looks to be a sort of North African job. There's some double barrel examples that, that certainly need some work, but um, I think the estimate's only £100. So uh, there we go, that's something different. And carrying along the way, this looks rather nice condition. This is the Corgi. Ecuri Ecos set, the racing team, of course, um, with 
by the looks of it, it's three vehicles inside in their boxes and yeah, nice oh, condition. Look at cool. that, really lovely. So uh, some poor child didn't get to enjoy those, but um, all the better for the collector that gets to enjoy them. Now that's lot 1461. And there's other bits, you know, we see another lot here, 1460. You've got a Legretti Zambra enameled thermometer that's rather smart and in with it, you've got a nice old lawn tennis measure. You've got a set of cup weights that uh, are all stamped up and certainly 19th century. You've got a magnifying lens. You get a cased set, probably drawing instruments. Yes, of, of drawing protractors and the like, drawing instruments, um, very faint inscription. And, and there's more, you get these old binoculars by Zeiss. So what a lot there, lot 1460. Something for everyone in there quite possibly. Otherwise, going down the line, quickly whizzes round. Did we want to go down there? No, not particularly. Let's have a look. Michael Cadman. Now, we've been selling these Cadman works. Um, he died a few years ago, and his studio contents have been going through, and they're, they're coming to the end now. And people are sort of picking up, and prices are increasing a little bit now. This is like 1634. And because these are studio remnants, they're sort of semi sort of heading towards possibly being somewhat unfinished, depending on which one you get. But there's a nice mixture here. Mm. The, uh, that's nice, isn't it? The cow yeah. parsley. He had a lovely touch. Um, and again, yeah, that one. Look at that. Yeah, they're yeah. rather nice, aren't they? So that's one, four, six, three, four. This is another one by him, more finished. So put it on its own from 1964. One, six, three, three. Kept the estimates modest, sort of 60 to 80 pounds. Gosh. Next to it, a nice uh, debt mold. Etching, engraving, etching. Gosh, it's, it's very fine. It's isn't lovely, it? isn't it? It's called yeah. the captive. And uh, that's like 1635, I like that. In, in it, sort of 1 to 200, might go on a little bit more. Um, there's a nice sign here, this is fun. Any person who admits to shut and fasten this gate is liable to a penalty not exceeding 40 shillings. <laughs> lot 1311, estimate 50 to 70, cast iron, that'll never wear out. There's some Liberty Tudric pewter wares, because Tudric was the brand name for their pewter wares. This one is stamped Tudric. It's, some of these are designed by Archibald Knox and some are sort of look like they are. I think that's a look like they are. That's lot 1304. Across the way here, there are some others. 1341, you get this lug-handled example with the cabochons, which is fully marked up. English pewter made by Liberty & Co, that one. With it, this grad pair of vases. Um, and marked up there, Tudric English Pooter Liberty & Co. Nice little lot, that, that's estimate one to 150. Uh, further on, one more lot, 1323. Very stylish chamber stick, that's very sort of Archibald Knox, with a very unstylish, just pretty ordinary, uh, planished inkwell and a, an okay mug. Um, and the estimate reflects that, it's 120, 180. So nice little lots of Tudric there. We've got some Shelley in the cell. Shelley yeah. used to be quite sought after, but it sort of dropped back. Very distinctive, bright coloring. Aren't they? This lot, 1321, you get all these bits and pieces of mm. Shelley and you get some repro Claris Cliff. These are sort of reprints of the original patterns. Um, all for the princely sum of 40 to 60 pounds we're offering it at. Mm. And then there's uh, further sort of artworks down the line. What's what? It's ships. Is that a ship's light? That is, is that? a ship's light. Gosh. It's a seahorse. It says so on the top. Uh -huh. Seahorse GB trademark. Um, it's lamp. Actually, oh, it's yeah. actually used as a lamp, right? Well, it's been wired for electricity. Mm. Yeah. And um, that is lot 1328. I don't think that's a, It's not a port or starboard because they have the colouring, don't no. they? It's, um, it's for something else. It says... Here I am. Um, so yeah, that's that's that. You've got a ship's lamp, um, a host of stuff over the back there to look at online and enjoy. Um, a very nice wall light, lovely quality. Look at that. The uh, quiver of arrows as the back stem. It's a reoffer, but one, two, eight, nine. Well, that's the thing. One is a bit of a struggle, isn't it? You know, it's. Maybe you've got a hallway or corridor or something, but it's, it doesn't, it's, if you haven't got a set, it's going to be a pain to You're find its friends. You're saying how much you like 1264? I like 1264. This is Worcester, 18th century Worcester, and we've got a few lots of Worcester scattered through the sale. 
Uh, Dan has dated it to circa 1772. Gosh. It's pretty precise, isn't it? Oh. Um, with um, So this is the classic printed blue and white, and then this is hand-decorated in enamels with the um, Asian figures in various pursuits, he has said. Um, it's not £4,000. I think the estimate is there around sort of 250 300 But that's a rather nice coffee pot. Yeah, lovely, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, good thing, that. So, um... So we're going to go... Is there the anything side? else? Yeah, we'll go over the other side and go and have a look at the uh, garden furniture, etc., and show you what's there. So here we are in the warehouse, and there is some furniture here, but in the main, I'm going to be showing you garden things. Uh, but this caught my eye. Lot uh, 1007. Nice miniature chest of drawers. I mean, looking at the styling of it, it looks to be an early Victorian example. It's in mahogany. You've got cross banding and boxwood stringing. Little nick out of it there. Um, nice drawers, original locks, no key, of course. Um, and yeah, just in nice condition. A little bit of losses to the edges, but good colour to it. So we like that. And much more saleable than a great big chest. Uh, down then here, then, more urns. Um, a good selection. 1010, we've got sort of basket moulding there on this, this reconstituted stone example. Here's an unusual urn with goat's head handles and sort of metal goat's horns emerging from it. 1012 is this terracotta example. Mm. Quite nice quite unusual, that yeah, one. nice look to that. It's very mm. different, isn't it? 1014, a good pair of fluted urns, reasonable depth to them inside. Then if you've got a well, but haven't got the well head, well you've got the well head but you need more to it, this will come in very handy. A nice wrought iron uh, structure to sit on top of the well head. Gosh. Uh, with the hook there and what have you to have your bucket and pulley and what have you. So very useful to somebody. It's very um, useful. Very unuseful to most people, but mm. um, let's hope we find two I wonder two if you could improvise well and use it for something else, because it's, it's rather oh, fun, you isn't it? build what you liked, really, couldn't you? Yeah, I'm surprised could, um, you're not interested in it. No, I can't see the potential personally, but, but I'm sure I'll think about <laughs> yes, it. So I carry know. one down. You, this is interesting. It's a bit of um, concrete art. Look at that. They've in, in stuck pebbles and flints into this basket. It reminds me of Potter's Museum in Bramber. Um, lot 1017. Oh, yes. uh, we drift past some steamer chairs. Seem to have a lot of coffee nice tables this. in this cell. Um, yeah. So I pity the auctioneer on those. Just, uh, they're never the easiest thing to sell, but if you fancy a coffee table, this could be the, a good opportunity. Nice clean pair of uh, armchairs there. Not old, but, but in nice clean condition with a sort of herringbone upholstery, rather smart those. I cannot, yes, yes I it's can. Done there it is, it's lot 1025. Then down this way, do I want to go this way? No, I want to go this way. More cheap garden furniture. Now, how about a nice big trolley basket? Yes. <laughs> What I need is a trolley basket. No, you don't. Look at the size of it. It's an absolute whopper. So this rather lovely uh, great big trolley basket, at least that's what I'm going to call it. It is a dirty great basket sitting upon a trolley, uh, with which uh, you do get the wheels with it. All be revealed. No, you don't. This is 1109. And if you need a very big log basket, you've come to the right place. Otherwise, the wheels, the cart wheels are 1110. Uh, this further teak furniture here, we, we still seem to be supplying half the nation with it, which is great. Uh, there's some lovely, um, very heavy cast and wrought iron gates, a run of them, 1118, 1119, another lot further down. Just so and little, aren't they? They're dinky, but I suppose once you yes. mount Hang them, them on a post yep. like that, yes. I mean, the rabbits will get under at that height, won't they? But yeah. Quite nice though, They're really they? solid. Really Remarkable. Heavy. They must have come from something interesting. Mm. There's a bigger example. Yes, there's a nice one behind. Nice. Yeah. Um, Look, I'm seeing you've got more that, yes. pots. Uh, one of these freestanding sort of raw time jobs. Put your plants on, florist stand, what have you. And then down here, poor old Mercury, he's had a hard time. He's in lead. 1120. Uh, and he's sort of <laughs> oh, after his Yam Bologna, oh, you know, the classic. Foot. Exactly, oh, yeah. I mean, He's, uh, that's too much yoga for you. Um, <laughs> yes, yes. He's going to need some work, but uh, we'll be rather good when he's done, because yeah. look, if that's his leg there, he's going to stand about oh, yes, of course. seven yeah, foot tall. Yeah. Um, nice. But you'll need some super glue for that one. So there we go, a whole mixture of stuff as ever. Come along and see us on view. Uh, it's well worth coming and poking around because you only see a sort of small selection of what's, what's here. And uh, we look forward to seeing you on the cell. Thank you.